Depends also, on your it. What's the first W in WWF stand for? World. Yeah, not America. So the the problem is Vince thinks that America is the baby face of the world, and I don't yeah. think that's the case. I'll just leave that to that, but we don't want to start getting FBI knocking on our doors with our opinions. But anyway. Um, you can bring it. One, two, three. Newsstand versus Newsletter embarks on a journey of a classic wrestling year. Were the PWI readers accurate with their assessment of talent? Were the Wrestling Observer Newsletter subscribers more right than wrong? Join longtime friend Scotty and Andrew as they talk about Newsstand versus Newsletter. Welcome to another episode of Newsstand versus Newsletter. I am your host, the future Hall of Famer, Scotty B. I'm bringing on Big Andrew, who's just ready to leave. You're just getting ready to leave. I see you get up. What are you trying to run away? You trying to run no, away? I was going to raise my chair, but it's already at the highest. No, no, I don't like that. I don't like that right there. That's that's unacceptable in the Newsstand versus Newsletter world universe. Why am I All looking of- at so much ceiling on your side? Why don't you tilt the camera or something so you can like see yourself? Well, I can't go much. I can't go. See, the thing is, my screen is cracked, bro. And I can't bring it back. I like people to see my ceiling. I like. I get lots of compliments. Mm. Also, it's a nice light you get going on there. All seven people that are watching us for yeah. the first 35 seconds of the fucking podcast. A lot more than I thought. So, anyway, this is a redo. Because we originally, this was, the original, was this the first one we ever did? 1991. Now, this was a big fight to get Andrew to do this one. He didn't want to do it, but I thought, you know what, brother? It has to get done. The quality was shit on the first one, like real, real bad. And just want to redo it. It's been a year and a half. We don't remember any of the things. We got some fun commercials. Uh, Darren and I can't remember the last Wrestling Club, giving them the credits for that. But also, I edited the fucking things. So, I mean, I should get half the credit. And also, I want to give a big shout out to Shooting the Shiznit. I think we may have forgotten the last time. Uh, but uh, check it out. Five dollars. Subscribe to the Patreon. Deal. Make sure to subscribe to us. Hit subscribe. Uh, we have a contest. Uh, we'll, yep. A certain subscriber will get uh, a three month premium of YouTube. Yeah, and as soon as we get to 100, we're doing a draw. So yeah. you don't have to be the 100th subscriber, just one of the 100. And I'll tell you this, people. I had a week of not a lot of money coming in because I do my own business. So I had a week, a rough week, and I got some money yesterday. And I paid that guy you're looking at right there back a couple bucks out him. And I went right down to YouTube Premium, baby, and I made sure to subscribe, pay my 11 bucks a month because I can't live without my YouTube Premium. Food? Oh, fuck food. I look it. If anyone wants to say, look at me. I, I'm okay for food. Trust me, I don't need to worry about food. Now, we but, have uh, rewards. We've heard feedback where we do too much chitter-chatter at the start. So Who did we hear that feedback from? I don't remember. Nobody told us that feedback. <laughs> Nobody watches our show. Um, 1991. What's the interview in 1991? Um, kind of a transitional year for me. Um, it would be my last full year as what I considered a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you so know, you were 28, 29? Well... I was 11. Uh, yeah. 12 is when I stopped like collecting toys until I became a, a grown-up child. But yeah, yeah um, exactly. Yeah, so it was uh, it was a fun year. Uh, it was my first year getting TBS. Yeah, uh, you talked so, about that in last week. We recorded last night. This yeah. is kind of similar. Yeah, so we keep going. Yeah. And um, I don't really remember much else. 91 is more like. I remember stuff that happened in wrestling as opposed to that happened in my own life in 91. Uh, I could tell you stuff in 90. I could tell you stuff in 92 and pretty much all the other years. But 91 is a kind of a lost yeah. year for me. What about yourself? Pretty much. I'm kind of still into wrestling, but we're talking about the last I'll say it again. Getting more into music. Uh, like really started getting into music big time. So like the alternative wave. It's funny because I'm a big Guns Roses fan, but like Nirvana came out in 91. Didn't really become a fan of them in like 90s, 93. But it's, you know, music and stuff like that. Wrestling. I'm still a wrestling guy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I mean, I remember Flair coming in and not being like completely blown away by it, like a lot of people were. I was like, yeah. But uh, you know, last year living where my childhood, my young, my youth home, the next year, the youth home. I wasn't in a youth home. The house I lived in as a youth. We yeah. moved the next year into the country, and that changed everything. So yeah, that's nine seventy one for me. So we're gonna hop right into the awards. We're gonna start rookie of the year, and we'll let uh, Andrew. Do you want to guess mine, or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. Uh, was it the Lightning Kid? It was incorrect. Oh, John Johnny, Bad. I open every match and tell you say pay review. Be bad. Yes, Johnny Be Bad wins. I don't have actual numbers, but I have um, like the actual runner ups. So let's give it a second here. Johnny Be Bad wins it. Uh, number two is actually Lightning Kid. Number three is I, 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 I cannot pronounce it. It's just way too hard. I S H I N R I K I. Ring a bell. Debbie Malenko and Chaz Taylor. That's my rookie there. I'm going with Lightning Kid for you. Oh, I had to bring up my notepad here too. Is Lightning Kid yours? No, oh, it is John Bad. Johnny be bad, not John Bad. Johnny be bad. John Bad wins the bad. rookie of the year with 19,387 votes. Uh, first runner up is the Patriot, not a rookie, uh, with 11,856 votes. Second runner-up is Terry Power with 7,259 votes. A lot of uh, WWF fans uh, may be aware of her as Tori, the original Tori that was with Kane. And my third runner-up, Lightning Kid, with uh, 3,176 votes. Honorable mentions totaling 28,135 votes include Van Hammer, Chris Walker, Bill Kazmaier, PN News, and Rob Zakowski, also known as Rob Van Dam. So there's no uh, picking. We both had the same rookie of the year. So yeah. let me ask that. you this: Who do you think was the best rookie that year? Like out of that crew of rookies? Uh, uh, like all in all, or at that time? Let's say, who do you think had the best rookie year, and who do you think had the best career out of anybody that debuted in '91? I'd say Johnny Bad, probably best rookie year, because he did have a pretty good year. Best career, Van Dam maybe. Yeah, good call. Yeah, I think Van Dam. Um, okay, most improved. So it's you, it's for you first. So I'm gonna find my list here. I'm gonna go with stunning Steve Austin. It is actually the natural Dustin, Dustin Rhodes. Rhodes. He wins most improved wrestler of the year. Doesn't he have a brother? Who wrestles Cody, aka Dusty Rhodes' son? I think so. I think so. I think he competes on the on the Monday nights. Um, yeah, Dustin Rhodes wins Most Improved Wrestler of the Year with thirteen thousand two hundred and ninety three votes. Uh, first runner up is Ron Simmons with twelve thousand nine hundred and twenty three votes. Second runner up is The Undertaker with eight thousand two hundred and seventy four votes. And third runner up is Crush with five thousand two hundred and ninety three votes. Honorable mentions totaling 31,936 include Cactus Jack, Tony Anthony, Steve Dahl, Ellie Dante, and Chris Chavez. Okay. All right. Go with mine. I'm going to say Undertaker. Dustin Rhodes. Oh. Two for two. Yeah, we have two for two. Dustin Rhodes wins it. Um, Stunning Steve Austin is second. Cactus Jack is third. Billy Black is fourth. And Ke Keiko Ono, I cannot pronounce the last name, but it's someone from Japan, is fifth. Um, so we can't pick on that one either. So that's where it goes. Commercial time. Is everyone ready for this 10 second one? Get ready. You ready? Everyone book back. Here it comes. When you select vitamins, do you choose the only one with all natural colors, flavors, and sweeteners? Beta carotene, Hulk Hogan vitamins, the new champion of children's chewables. I know what his vitamin was. Yeah, the, I was watching that going, fuck Hogan. Like, by August, man, you're ruining everything. They go into the new hall, you lie through your teeth, and it's just like, dude, watching that commercial just makes me giggle. Like, oh my God, Hogan. Like, I get, like, now they come out, I want to think around Mania, the vitamins. I'm not sure. But regardless, they come out around, and I mean, by like, Dude, once the horror goes down, Hogan's fucked. Like, did you all... ever have any of those Hulk Hogan vitamins? No, I don't think we had them in Canada. Oh, but I, I just, I, I just know that like 
it was the time it was horrible. It was really bad timing because everyone, like everyone knew Hogan was juiced, but once the Hori went down, it was like no, it's it's confirmed now that Hogan's juiced. And the fact that he got out into he got out of testifying, which is hilarious, but everybody else had to. And that commercial just makes you giggle. It's like, dude, come on, man, I mean, you're not doing taking the vitamins. Fuck if the kids took the real Hogan vitamins. There was some bad. There was some bad fights at the playground. Put it that. There some bad hearts in the playground. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Kids dropping at thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next to <laughs> his brother. Yes. We used. I ever tell you. I'll tell the story here. When I was a kid, we when I went to elementary school, and this is funny. This will go to ninety one. Mm-hmm. We used to have a little baseball field, and we had the dugouts. The st- they had the steel, man, with the match. I was like, this is a steel cage match. So we'd all gather up in this little dugout, and what it was is it was a battle royal where you had to push the person out of the door. So, you know, doing our thing. And it was a great time. Because the funny thing about kids are, we knew it's not real, and we knew how to sell. Like, we were good at it. As little kids, yeah. that's what I So I remember one time, I caught this kid on the ground. Remember Slaughter's finisher with the knuckle? Oh yeah, the I atomic just, I did it right into his right into his temple. It's how he, he was crying and going on. I remember being the principal's office like you can't do that to people. Like, what do you mean? Like, you could really hurt him doing that. I'm like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But it was a great, it was a great time. It was a good time, man. And that little that little dug, it was big enough for all of us, man. There was kids fighting to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> like, because I'll tell you, man, I am uh five eight now, right? And that's not tall for my for a grown man. That's average, for your age. below average. Um, I was five eight in grade like fucking five or six. Mm. I was very big compared to them kids, and I use that to my advantage. I'll tell you that right now, brother. Yeah, we used I, to do something similar in my elementary school. We would have a battle royal on the steps. So Jesus Christ! Yeah, you'd get thrown down the stairs. You'd be eliminated. Um, how was someone not breaking the neck? stairs in the? Uh, <laughs> And you'd be holding on to the, the, the railing, trying not to get eliminated. It was fun. Yeah. You try to get your fucking neck broken because someone's <laughs> bound to slip down them you're stairs. Kids, you know, you're made of rubber. Yeah. <laughs> that is very true. Oh, my goodness. That's great times. All right. So we're going to jump into the next award. Um, it is the most inspirational wrestler of the year for you. Most disgusting tactic for me for 1991. Am I guessing? You're guessing. Yeah. Okay. It's got to be the Iraq stuff, right? Yeah, that's the picture I got. I really want, if I would have had time, I would have done like a whole mania background setting with Slaughter and Hogan and like no tickets behind it. Let's go. (laughs) I'm going to talk about that for a second. Let's go over the rest of it. I'll talk about that. Um, So that's number one. The the exact wording WF uses Gulf War as storyline for WrestleMania. Number two is WCW fires Ric Flair. Number three, WF angle with Jake Roberts. Number four, Hogan lies about steroids on uh, or well, what lies. angle with Jake? With earthquake squash and a snake? It doesn't say. It, I don't know what one it is. Um, we can talk about it in a second. Uh, Hogan using the title of immortal. Now, first off, like, I mean, that Iraqi show was bad, man. Like that was some <laughs> bad taste. I mean, and the fact that they use as excuse, listen, you weren't selling for Mania. That's well, the reason also- you moved it. What's the first W in WWF stand for? World. Yeah, not America. So the the problem is Vince thinks that America is the baby face of the world, and I don't yeah. think that's the case. I'll just leave it at that, but we don't want to start getting FBI knocking on our doors with our opinions. But anyway. Um, you can bring it. That, it was just, oh, it was stupid, dude. It was a dumb angle. It wasn't even, like, offensive. It was just dumb. Yeah. Like, burning the whole there shirt. There was zero people who bought Slaughter winning that match. Nobody thought yeah. Slaughter was walking out with the championship. The year before, 50-50. Could have gone either way. Yeah. Not with they showed, they, they showed with Hogan Warrior, too, but they didn't. Um, the uh, What's the second one again? Fire and Flair? No, whatever. I mean, listen. Disgusting. Flair's difficult. Let's just say that. He had rights, but so did they. Uh, using this, the snake angle? I wouldn't go as far as saying, it's a little shocking. I, mean, I just don't pretty... know which one they mean. Do they mean earthquake squashing the snake? It or do they say. mean the snake coming at the wedding reception? Or the snake biting Jake? I mean, biting Randy? I don't know. But we can talk about, we'll just assume they're saying Randy. And I'll okay. tell you, dude, watching that, as even as a 13-year-old, I was like, holy fuck, man. That's crazy. Randy. Like, very crazy. Very intense. Um, Hogan lying. Yeah, he screwed everybody over for that one. 
And using the immortal thing, well, nah, let's not discuss. That's just stupid. But inspirational wrestler of the year for you. I'm gonna go with Eric Embry. It's a good guess, but it is the Patriot. Oh, because of the American War. This is the war. Is that what they're doing that? Because that's hey, USA, baby. Uh Patriot wins inspirational wrestler of the year with 17,108. My, my, my cat's not impressed. He's giving me a dirty look when he heard that the Patriot won that. Uh, first runner-up is your boy, Jerry Lawler, with 14,284 votes. Second runner-up is Sid Justice, with 12,283 votes. And third runner-up is superstar Bill Dundee, with 8,124 votes. Honorable mentions totaling 18,726 include Hulk Hogan, Ron Simmons, Barry Windham, Tony Anthony, and Robert Fuller. All right. I listened to uh, Between the Streets, there talking about Robert Fuller. Um I think it was him or Parker. You know, he can win a three-legged race all by himself. What's that? He can win a three-legged race all by himself. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. Something about the beard. I don't know. I was half asleep. I love Between the Sheets. I do, but they go so long. I got to go through that fucking thing for like, it takes me like three days to go through one episode of them guys because they go on forever. Um, all right. Let's go to another commercial. Let's jump into... Oh, wait, oh, what's up they call? Here he goes with one here. Here's one. Sting Thrashing shoots off the big cannons for the WBF Championship live tonight, exclusively on pay-per-view. Gary Stridham defends the WBF Championship in a battle of the bulging biceps. But on the front line, the Iron Warrior, Mike Christian, will challenge along with the flexing Dutchman, Barry DeMay, plus a whole rack of 100% U.S.-tested grade-A prime beef. Don't miss the greatest bodybuilding event in history tonight, the WBF. Here's the question, question I have for you. How many times have Pat Patterson watched that promo and just be like, oh, How many times Jesus. Vince? Like, oh, he was like, we, we, need, we need to cut it. We need to go back and edit that. I need to, I need to see that film again, pal. Oh, my God. I mean, that is like, and I, listen, I have nothing against anyone in their sexuality at all. But hiding it like Vince is, it's like, dude, come on, man. Just say you love it. Like, that's cool, bro. Like, but he loves that. that. He's, I'm going to have an issue with, I might only have four uh, commercials because my other ones aren't loading for some reason. Give me a second here. I'm not really miss. I know. I hope they do load. Oh, that's fine. Just go ahead. It's no big deal. We're just trying to. We can jump into the next one. I just want to take a look at it here because it's just being a bit of a pain in the ass here. We'll go back to it anyway. All right. The next one we're going to go with is most popular and best baby face. I think that's. Your go first, the most popular wrestler. They're going to go with Stinger. It is indeed Mr. Sting. He wins most popular wrestler of the year with mm -hmm. an impressive 17,287 votes. First runner up is Hulk Hogan with 16,183 votes. Second runner up is Sid Justice with 13,184. And third runner up, are the Steiner brothers with 12,834. Honorable mentions totaling 11,239 votes include Bret Hart, Jerry Lawler, Roddy Piper, Ron Simmons, and Brian Pillman. All righty. Yeah, my videos are being odd. We'll take care of them later. Uh, for me, best baby face. Is it Sting? It is... The Hulkster. The Hulkster wins it. Let's go in here and take a look at what he wins it with. No vote and not an amount, but Hogan wins it. Runner-up is Sting. Onita, Savage, Matsuhira, Masawa. So this is the first one we pick. Who gets it? I'm going to go with Sting, dude. I'm not going with too. Hogan for that at all. Yeah, so. Not in 91. No. I mean. What's that? Not in 91. Uh, no. Warrior, not. Warrior and Taker were outselling uh, Hogan and Slaughter. So I don't even know what the observer readers were thinking. I mean, Hogan didn't have a, a, a big drawing feud all year. They probably just they probably had a hate on for Sting for some reason. That's how they work, them guys. They probably just hated him. Like, oh, we hate him now. Why? Oh, we just hate him. So we're just gonna we're just we hate his guts all of a sudden. What do you do to you? We just don't like him because we're smarter than you. All right, fine. You're smarter than us. All right, last one before we hit the halftime show is gonna be tag team of the year. And for me, it's you pick mine first. Okay. Uh, was it the Steiner brothers? 
Matsuhiro Masawa and Kawata. And I cannot pronounce Kawata's first name, so I am just going to say it. What is it again? Toshiaki. Toshiaki Kawata. Number two is Rick, Rick and Scott Steiner. Number three is Hiro Hase and Kensuke Suzuki. Number four is Steve Williams and, Tor and Terry Gordy. And number five is Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, a.k.a. the Rockers. Or Midnight Rockers, depending on what promotion you want to work with. For you guys, fuck, I need one. Steiners. It is the Enforcers. I thought that was fucking Borazuka for a second on the other side. I'm like, what is it, the Bolsheviks? No, that's, uh, that's Larry and no. that's Iron. And okay. The Enforcers win Tag Team of the Year with 15,622 votes. Uh, first runner-up, the Legion of Doom with 14,914 votes. Second runner-up, the Steiner Brothers with 14,827 votes. So very close for the first three. And third runner-up, Robert Fuller and Jeff Jarrett with 6,523 votes. Honorable mentions totaling 18,712 include the Nasty Boys, Chris Walker and Steve Simpson, Billy Black and Joel Deaton, Crush and Steve Dahl, and the Hardliners. All right. So I'm going to pick the Masala and Kawada for my pick. I'm going to go Enforcers. Easy. I know. I already put it down. I already put it yeah. down. I know you're fucking just like, Larry's Missile's name pops up and you're something pops up in your pants. Yes, sicky. You're just like, ugh. If Larry's Missile walked in the door right now. Ah, it's Masawa. So much better. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, let's move oh, on. Oh, no, lift up my tights. That's how I yeah, saw Yeah, let's move along. We're gonna, I, have to, I have to put it in this way now because uh, my my thing's acting up. So I'm going to throw in another um, commercial. This one here. Oh, this is a good one. Here we go. It's going to take a second to kick in. It's going to kick in on our screen here. So let's give it a second. Because We're it's third circle. Here. They will both be ready. They will both be at the top of their game. But only one will walk away. We can hear each other now because live on pay per view, the Universal Wrestling Federation <laughs> crowns the Sports Channel so Tell me that you're gonna have to be at Beach Brawl for just fourteen ninety five. Oh, All five people are in order. Doctor Death Williams, Paul, Mister Wonderful Orndorff, Van Van Bigelow, Don the Rock Morocco, V Brian Blair, Cowboy Bob Orton, the Unpredictable Cactus Jack. Steve, the Wild Thing Ray, plus a ladies' championship match. This event will be hosted by wrestling's living legend, Bruno San Martin. Now, you got to look at that and think, if you're just a guy like watching TV and you're a wrestling fan, you're kind of like, holy shit, there's a lot of guys in there. Yeah, it was Let's only 15 it. bucks. Like, we didn't have access to pay-per-view where we came from. Yeah, yeah but I think if we had it in 91, 15 bucks... Yeah, probably, I mean, but they, they had a, they had a bad buy. You know, I, was, I would watch anything that was professional wrestling. They had a bad buy rate. <laughs> Their buy rate was shit. Um, I'll do one more commercial, and then we'll jump into the halftime show, because we're putting along pretty good there. So let me see here. Let's go into... Let's check this, this one out here. Take Hogan teams up with Sid Justice to battle Ric Flair and The Undertaker in the ultimate tag team competition. Here we go! And Macho Man Randy Savage vows revenge on Jake the Snake Roberts when Fox presents Saturday night's main event. Right off the top, somebody's gonna get busted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we laughing at? The fact someone's getting busted right up. Right after the top, somebody's gonna get busted. Yeah, it's... uh. The no Fox problem. Stars, we had two of them. They did two of them. And I mean, by the second one, nobody gave a fucking shit about it at all. It was uh, a ghost town. All right. I'm going to jump into some sports and stuff like that. And then we'll jump into the halftime show. Sound good? Yep. All right. So the NFL is jumping into it. 1991 draft happened April 21st and the 22nd in the Marriott Hotel. The first pick, the Dallas Cowboys selected defensive tackle Russell Maryland from the University of Miami. Have you ever heard of him? No, I, I think it was good, but not like a first round good kind of. Thing. You know how the, you know how they had that first overall pick. Yeah, they got it from your boys. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's well. That's like Miami with Tyreek, man. Go ahead and take our fucking receiver. We'll take all your picks. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. We'll first overall, nice probably, probably would have helped. Well, they must. But they traded up to that. That, that wasn't your pick. Oh. And that was one of your picks. They traded up, I think, to get no, because they, they had a bad year. They went one to fifteen the year before. Who Dallas? Yeah, 
Oh, but they had a real bad 89 and 90. But either they traded up to get it or they just went in that. Regardless. Um, best record in the league that year, 1991. Was it San Fran? Washington, 14 and 2. Uh, worst record. Dallas? The Colts, they Ooh. were 1 and 15. And did I not put down the Super Bowl? I did not put down the Super Bowl. Give I already know it. What was it again? Oh, it was, it was like uh, the Super Bowl of Washington over Buffalo. Yeah. Okay. You know, because I watched it that year. That year, they were like thirteen and zero. Because I watched some old clips and stuff. They were thirteen at one point, which is nuts. And now they're lucky to fucking get five wins. <laughs> Excuse me. That, that team's a mess. Um, most valuable player of the year, Thurman Thomas for the Buffalo Bills. Coach of the year, Wayne F- Fawn is for the Detroit Lions. Detroit went like twelve and four, man. Like De- Detroit was good back then. Offensive well, player had, of the year. They had Barry, didn't they? Uh, yeah. They had Barry 91 because they dropped Barry 89. Uh, offensive player of the year, Thurman Thomas. Defensive player of the year, Pat Swilling for New Orleans. Offensive rookie, Leonard Russell for New England. Running back, never heard of him. Defensive rookie, Mike Kroll for Defender, never, never heard of him. Come up player of the year, Jim Vincent McMahon. Oh, really? <laughs> he played for Philly that year. He was with Chicago back in the 80s. Uh, man of the year, Anthony Munez for Cincinnati offensive tackle. And Mark Rippon was the MVP of the Super Bowl for Washington. MLB, best and worst record. Atlanta have the best record? Pittsburgh Pirates. You know you don't hear that a lot. <laughs> you don't hear that a lot. 98 and 64, uh, the worst record. Was it Boston? Cleveland Indians, now the Cleveland Guardians, 57 and 105. The Minnesota Twins defeated the Atlanta Braves in the World Series, four games to three. Rookie of the year was Jeff Bagel for Houston, Chuck Knobloch from Minnesota. Cy Young was Tom Gladwell for Atlanta, which they won Cy Youngs every fucking year. Roger Clemens for Boston. Manager of the year, Bobby Cox for Atlanta, Tom Kelly from Minnesota. And most valuable player, Terry Pe- Pendleton for Atlanta and Cal Ripley Jr. for Baltimore. What were you going to say? Oh, it was nothing. All right. Actually, uh, going back to getting TBS for the first time. Yeah. Atlanta Braves. You got, like, whether you liked them or not, you were getting Atlanta Braves games. Oh, yeah. And they were good. So well, they were all smart, by the way. I remember the the pitcher that was hot when I started watching the, the Braves on TBS was Steve Avery. And yep. then he wound up being like their fourth in rotation. Oh, they were and nuts. Their pitch was crazy back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. They had Maddox, Smoltz, Glavin, and Avery. I mean, that's... Like, that's four starters in one team, basically. Four yeah. number one starters. Four aces. Yeah. NBA, best record. The Bulls? Portland Trailblazers, 63-19. Bulls were like 61. There's only two games off. Uh, worst record? I'm going to guess Clippers. Denver, 20-62. and 62. Bulls defeat the Lakers four games one. Most valuable player was Michael Jordan. Rookie of the year, Derek Coleman for the Nets. Defensive player of the year, Dennis Robin for the Pistons. Um, sixth man of the year, I cannot pronounce the guy's name. The left, Smith, I don't know his name, Indianapolis or any paper Pacers. Most improved player of the year, Scott Stiles, Stiles for Orlando Magic. And coach of the year, Don Cheney for the Houston Rockets. And last but not least, the NHL best and worst record. Uh, best record was it Chicago? <laughs> it was 49, 23, and 8. Worst record. Quebec? Quebec 16, 15, and 14. And let's say something real quickly here before we go on to the the the, 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 the finals was Pittsburgh over nor, over the North North Stars. They destroyed them like eight to one in the last game. Uh Gil LaFleur, let's give him a little shout out. I know a lot of people here don't watch hockey. But uh, let's tell the story. And I don't care. You know what, man? We're going to tell it real quick because I love it. It's an awesome story. Right. But just think of it nowadays. Because you told me the story this morning. My uncle told me it this afternoon. And I believed you, but we talked about it. My uncle is in his 60s. He loved Guy Lafleur. Like, Guy Lafleur was the man to him. So Montreal, I mean, 50s, 60s, they're, they're a dominant team. Right? I mean, they're not losing much. If they're not winning the cup, they're usually losing in the finals. Or, yeah. like, the semis. So 71 rolls around. They're having a good year. Guy Lafleur's in the in the juniors, which now kids that don't follow hockey, that's almost like the minors for hockey. You know, would you say that? Yeah. College for hockey. 
Do you have a Fleur in 118 games because 339 points? Yeah, he was pretty good. Pretty good. And uh, Montreal wants him. They want uh, They're really good, so they're not going to get a first overall pick. So, Andrew, tell the audience, and if I have to correct you, I'll do it, but what yeah, did they I do think, to get that first overall pick? I can't remember the um, – I know the, the teams. Team. I, know, I know the teams. I know oh, the was it the team. Seals? It was the Kings. Oh, okay. They, they traded for the first round first round pick to the Kings, and then they traded a player away to a team that was competing with the Kings for like being the worst team in the league. Yeah, so in order for little... them to get a couple more wins than the Kings, so that the Kings would be the worst team. They were playing chess, and the other these you know expansion teams because they were relatively new yeah. uh, were playing checkers, and they were getting. I mean, how do you do? How do you trade your first pick? When you know you're going to be a bad team yeah, yeah, and you trade it to Montreal, you're not trading it to like a, a middle middling team that may be on the bubble of going to play. You're trading it to Montreal. Whatever. Um, you know what people need? Montreal says, listen, when, we, when you come into play, so we won't destroy you. We'll only yeah. beat you by four. We'll, yeah. we'll beat you by 12. Because, I mean, he comes in at 71. And, I mean, for me as a kid watching hockey, him and Gretzky are my first two memories of players. Guy Lafleur and Gretzky. My my family, like all the Montreal fans in my family, loved Guy Lafleur. Like he was the guy. He, he was, was just a man. little bit before my time. Yeah. Like uh, the first season I remember watching hockey was '86. With oh, he was already player. yeah, he was already retired. Yeah, he was retired at that point. Like before then, my only knowledge of hockey was Gretzky yeah. and seeing uh, team photos when after they won the cup and just being in awe of goalies because yeah, they just they're, 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 amongst the team. Um, yeah. But uh, also a, a personal story with regards to Guy Lafleur. I remember in 1990 or 91, it may have been this year, I'm not sure, um, okay. he was uh, signing autographs at the Superstore <laughs> in, in St. John, and there was a long lineup. Oh yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I remember being with my mom and waiting like two and a half hours, three hours to finally get him to sign a couple of my hockey cards that I that I brought. And uh we we get home and my grandfather's there and he had a, a poster signed by Dean oh. Fleur. And I was like, You waited in line? He said, No, I just just walked ahead and he didn't <laughs> didn't care and he just <laughs> So I guess no one sent into him. They're just like, well, no, um, but yeah, Guy Lafleur was uh, pretty awesome. He scored sixty goals in like seventy six, man. Yeah. That's that's unheard of. But yeah, real. That's sad that he passed away. He was not old either. He was, how old was he? Like early seventy. Seventy, and he used to uh, used to smoke cigarettes on the on the bench. I mean, it was a different time. These are I can't believe he, like a, a hockey player. Like yeah. that's and I, it wasn't like a, a slow defenseman on the fourth line. This was <laughs> a guy that was you know flew. Down the down the ice, and he did it while smoking. So yeah, good for him. Yeah, well, different back then, but they they didn't change their lungs, and that's why he's no longer here. They uh they won't become like him anymore. But that's if I mentioned that uh, passing. Let's jump into TVs, and then we'll get into our show, sure. TV and stuff like that, real quick. Where are we at? Here we are. Um, top TV shows for 1991. Number five, The Bill Cosby Show. You can't talk about that anywhere. A Different World's number two, number four. Roseanne's number three. 60 Minutes is number two. And what do you guess is number one? Is it Cheers? It is Cheers. God bless Cheers, man. I was a big fan. So now, for music, top five albums, gross selling-wise. Number five, A Tune Baby by U2. Absolutely awesome album. Definitely suggest for anyone that doesn't, doesn't heard it. Uh, Queen, Greatest Hits. Two, which is strange. I was fourth because Wayne's World didn't come out to the year after. That's why I thought Queen really hit the big again. Well, 91, I believe, was the last oh, year. Oh, Mercury died. Yeah, he died in November. Um, Dangerous by Michael Jackson, number three. Nirvana, never mind, was number two. I am questionable about that one because I came out in September. There's no way it was number two by and 91, but whatever. And number one was Metallica, the Black Album, which, ugh, yuck, not a fan. All right, and movies. Number five, very good movie. Doesn't get talked about. Say Slickers. <laughs> do, you, do you like Slay Slickers? Yeah, it's all right. I'm, I'm not oh, a big Billy Crystal guy, to be honest with you. Um, like it. It's one of those movies that I remember when we had the movie network. It, 
you'd wind up seeing it like 16 times. And... Yeah, yeah, true. They had it on a lot. Yeah. Uh, Sansa Lambs is number four. Number three is Home Alone. Number two is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And guess what number one is? Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Yes, and man, we watched the shit out of that movie when I was a kid, man. That was a badass kid, man. Thor Thorpe played a bad kid. I remember. What's that? What, what's your opinion of the first one? Oh, garbage compared to two. Garbage. I know. And and people think you're stupid if, if you say that. Like, I tried to watch it. And good. we shut it off because it was like, this sucks. That's not good. Two's awesome, man. And two yeah. back then, like, the graphics and shit were the bomb. I was a big Guns N' Roses fan, so You Can Be Mine was in the background. I loved it, man. And I watched that movie like a motherfucker. All right. Let's get into the halftime show. We're, we're doing pretty good here for time. Let's jump in and see what see what's going on. Because you're going to kind of explain to me. We just did this quickly on the phone. So what are we going with? We're going to give our hot takes. Uh, opinions that we have that are not mainstream wrestling opinions. Uh, so I'll start for just as an example. Uh, when people talk about WCW, they usually think about the Nitro era. I actually prefer WCW from 91 to 94 as opposed to uh, the Nitro. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but I I thought that the TV was better for, for matches. I found in the Nitro era, they were, were condensed. They were shorter matches, and they made it so that the the pay-per-view you had to pay to, to watch good matches, whereas the TV in the early 90s, you had pay-per-view quality matches every week. Okay. Uh, mine, the Attitude Era sucks. Garbage. It's absolute trash. And uh, my personal well, opinion. It's unless you count 97 as being part of the attitude. No, no. 98. This is my thing. For me, it was watchable. After Mania 14, like it went to shit, man. Triple H is like the leader of DX. Like he's not believable at all. It's leader of DX. Um, it's shit, man. It's like Austin against Kane. Austin against Taker. Austin against Taker and Kane. Austin against Taker and Kane. No DQ. Austin against Kane and no blood. First blood match. Austin against like. Austin and Foley were good. Yeah, but that's fine. But I'm talking like they had Austin, Kane, and Taker for months. I know. And it was just like, it was in 99. My God, man. It was unwatchable. It was so bad. Yeah. And people love it. People, they, turn around. they turn it around in 2000. People love it. Like, look at 99. It's so great. It's not great. It is dog shit, man. That belt's changing hands every fucking five minutes. <laughs> like, it's absolutely horrible. I cannot stand the attitude there at all. I do not like it whatsoever. I know people love it. And that's my opinion of the answer. It's, it's absolute trash. It's not watchable. You got something else? Yeah. Um, this, I wouldn't have thought that this would be as controversial as it is, but I'm very online and I see a lot of, you don't I, say. I see a lot of opinions and I, I think it's because we're getting older, Scott. So the, to speak for yourself. I just turned 24. The, the kids that were around after us, they look at the LJNs as chew toys, and they prefer the Hasbros. I oh, am no. an LJN no, man LJN. All through the way. and through. Yeah. Uh, I, I find with the Hasbros, they're a little more cartoony. They're fine. Like I, I, I play with them, and but I, I kind of outgrew them. Um, I was twelve by I think the third series, so I just stopped collecting. Right away, them. I wasn't into them. I wasn't into them right away. I didn't care for them at all right away. Yeah. Like the LJNs are an iconic toy, and you'd be surprised how many people prefer Hasbro's to uh, LJNs. Not to mention the the Mattels and the Jacks. They they say that there's more points of articulation. But when you're a kid, you have imagination. You can have yeah, a exactly. figure in this, yeah. and you can have a twenty minute five star match. We talked you about that. On, I love to cut you off my gathering. I have my birthday. My friend Kenny had got a bunch of LJNs somehow. And we were talking with different guys, and we were talking guys we'd use. And he's like, well, I'd use Tito and Rick Martell. Like, yeah. And he was talking with different guys that he had. He had a massive amount of them, which is fun. Because, you know, and, and I'm kind of like, um, I don't want to veer off, but I, I am veering off. But I feel like wrestling might be making a comeback, man. Professional? I feel, yeah, I got a feeling that the old people that weren't watching before are kind of starting to come back a little bit. Because I noticed that at the gathering I had a lot of people were talking about wrestling. I'm thinking like, wow, this is kind of weird. Well, it's because it's you. I mean, I, would they be talking about wrestling if they were no, around? I wasn't even, I, they weren't talking to me. They were talking amongst each other. And I found it very strange. Like, wow, like it's kind of feels like it's coming back. But anyway, my last one, I talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again, is 
the hatred the WWE fans have for AEW, this isn't really, you know, this isn't like uh, unknown. But you know, you know, what you should do. You should make your pitch because I know what you want. What do I want? You want to do a show where we? Um, oh we, yeah, a debate. Yeah. But I don't know if we can do that because it'd be hard for me to moderate it. This is my thing, though, to be fans. Um, you know, you guys are really bitter human beings. Like, you really are. Like, the thing is, for most AEW, I'm an AEW fan. I don't watch Raw ever. I don't watch SmackDown ever. You need to get, you need to do something to get me to watch it. Oh, I, 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 I flipped the SmackDown tonight with, during the, the Hawks game when there was a commercial. I couldn't, I couldn't flip back fast enough. I'd rather watch the commercials for the, for the basketball game than SmackDown. This is the thing. If you guys want to have your sports entertainment, that's fine. Enjoy it. Have a blast. I'm being serious. But, like, when you talk about pro wrestling, I mean, I watched Dynamite, by the way. I found it on my PVR. You open it, you just open the matches. It's good. It's it's always good, man. It's a good show. And it's better than Raw. Like, don't, if you guys want to see better. If you guys I, I don't want to Dynamite than their pay per view. Like, are you going to watch uh, WrestleMania Backlash? No, I'm not. I didn't watch Mania. <laughs> None of it. <laughs> but the thing is, is like you know what? Every time you, for gambling purposes, exactly. Every time that you guys that love WWE and go on to the internet and bitch with AEW, you look stupid. I'm sorry, you look really dumb. You look like very bitter human beings. It's as simple as that. That's just and what it is. Like in '96, saying that Raw is better than Nitro. Yeah, which would be insane because it was not even close. You should make that claim. '98. <sighs> You, you can as well. You can't in 96. It's impossible. If you, if yeah. you say that and you and you think that, your opinion means nothing to us because yeah. you have right. shit taste. And I'll say it. If someone's come on and debated, we'll be respectful. We won't be oh, – we'll do our best. I mean, I can't guarantee it. But anyway. No, I think we'll be respectful because, I mean, they, they took the time yeah. to, to come on. We respect your time. If, if you're a WWE fan, I would love – to have a debate where you're saying, I mean, I, I'm just picturing the arguments. AEW is just a glorified indie. It's a an outlaw mud show. Uh, they, they just give the fans what they want. They do nothing but yeah. surprises. What are they, they supposed to do for the fans? I'm not giving what they want. Like, well, they're so used to it. They're WWE brained. They're, they're yeah. so used to the, the heat, brother. Think of the heat. Like, there's no heat. You, yeah. you hear those crowds. You yeah, hear they're, crickets. They're, they're, yeah, you hear the, the buttons on their phone. Yeah. You don't hear like. Boo! I hate this guy. You hear, boo! I hate this company. You know, the funny thing is, like, AW fans, let's say they're hardcore wrestling fans. And, you know, if you go to an AW fan, think, uh, like, you walk up to one, say, right now, it's like, hey, how you doing? Like, I was, I was uptown one day where we live called uptown. I seen a kid with an AW sweater. I'm like, hey, I dig your sweater. I like it. So I was like, oh, thanks, man. I walked away. If I was to go up to him and say, hey, what do you think of MJF? Like, I fucking love MJF. He's awesome. But you put him in that arena, he'll boo him because he gets it. He doesn't hate him, but he boos because he's just good at what he does. You know, CM Punk, they are taking guys and saying, okay, almost like Hayward do. You're good at this. This is what your job is. MJF is really awesome at doing promos, man. And if he goes to WWE in a year and a half, good for him for money, man. But, dude, if you want to do a promo, they're going to wire you down. You're the biggest time. It's number two, buddy. That's all you are. No offense. But anyway. Did you, uh, did you rate your matches on Grapple? No, I will. All right, let's jump back into the awards. Let's jump back into the awards there. Let's just get into the, the kids to get upset. So we're going to go. Um, the next one is going to be the feud of the year. Um, I think it's my turn. So you pick my feud of the year. Is it Masawa and Company against Jumbo and Company? It is very correct. Yes, it is. Masawa and Company versus Jumbo and Company. We're going to go and find it here. Where's that? Uh, number two is Flair and Hogan. Number three is Eddie Gilbert and Cactus Jack. Number four is Aja Khan, Aja Khan and Bull Nakana. And number five is Raiden Savage and Jake Roberts. And for your feud of the year, I'm going to go take her warrior. Mm, you are correct. It is yeah. the ultimate warrior and the underwear taker. You're hitting your mic. You're hitting your mic, guy. It keeps echoing back when you prop it. You're prop oh, it your mic. It's okay. Go ahead. Uh, so Undertaker and Ultimate Warrior win Feud of the Year with 15,332 votes. Uh, first runner-up is Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, gross. 14,000 people, what the fuck they're talking about? Second runner-up is Sting versus Cactus Jack and Abdullah the Butcher with 13,102 votes. Third runner-up is Lex Luger versus Ron Simmons with 11,919 votes. And honorable mentions totaling 16,920 include Cactus Jack versus Eddie Gilbert, Ron Simmons versus Butch Reed, 
Legion of Doom versus Nasty Boys, Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan, and Ric Flair versus Roddy Piper. So what are you picking for that on PWI or WON? I'm going to go Wrestling Observer. A little PWI. Oh, wow. I didn't see enough of that uh, Dumbo and the Solid stuff. And I don't mind that Warrior that Warrior um... the Warrior Taker feud was great. When he locked him in the casket, that was oh, great yeah. television. Yeah, it was really good. All right, let me jump into another commercial. Let's find one here. La, 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 where are we at? We're going to go into... That's already up there. We're going to go to this one. Seen the official publication of World Championship Wrestling. Awesome! Not just a catalog, but page after page of everything you want in a magazine. It's really big. Hard hitting features and inside information. I can't believe they printed that. And you can save 33% on your subscription. Yo, subscribe today and save some pay. On newsstands worldwide, it's WCW Magazine. That number doesn't work, kids, by the way. If you're trying to call for that magazine, that number doesn't work anymore. So, uh, well, good luck. We, we've, we've seen the um, the numbers for who watches our show, the, gra the uh, okay. demographics. There's no kids. It's it's us. But by, by the time that they get to this part of the show, there ain't nobody watching. <laughs> but for our boys shooting the scissors, they might be listening. Yeah, so. Brian's listening. So Yeah, Brian's pu pulling through. Um, the next award, Mantra of the Year. I'm going to go for you first. I'm going to go with, look, oh, Jesus, Mantra of the Year 91. I'm going to go with Paul Bearer. That's a good guess. It is Bobby Heenan. Yeah, in 91? I don't really, well, I guess he means his Henning. That's kind of weird. I know. He, uh, he's like, first half of the year, he's, he's managing, and then he retires. To, well, to become a broadcast journalist, but then he's with Flair, does a couple of house shows with him, like ringside. Yeah, and then... Gets the hell out of there pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Like he told that story. He needed to fuck away from Flair. Yeah. So Bobby Heenan wins manager of the year with 16,196 votes. Runners up. First runner up is Harley Race with 14,712. Alexandra York with 11,377. And third runner-up is Paul Bear with 8,812. Honorable mentions totaling 18,912. Lou, Lou Albano? Is Lou Albano in there? No, there is Teddy Long, Tony Rumble, Jim Cornette, and Jimmy Hart. Well, I'm surprised Lou Albano didn't make the list because you know how Lou likes to get in there. Um, what is my mantra of the year? Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Jim Cornette. You are incorrect. What? Oh, Sherry. Sherry Martell, sensational Sherry. Yes. She wins it. Let's see who the runner-ups are. Sherry wins it. Runner-up is Paul Bearer at two, Polly Dangerously at three, Bobby Heenan at four, and Jimmy Cornette at five. So who are you picking for that one? Sherry. Okay, give me a second here. My computer, man, I don't know how this thing is still existing. Unbelievable. I'm trying to... Are you keeping track, too? I thought you were. I am, but I'm just saying my typing is fucking... Oh, my computer is just like it's okay. It's okay. I can uh, I can do it too. It's fine. I'm just like my computer hates me. One of these days, it's just gonna say fuck off and just shut off on me. See, fuck you and fuck your podcast and your four goddamn subscribers. Uh, let's jump into another another uh, commercial. Oh, let's check it out. Introducing the newest WWF wrestling buddy, Big Boss Man and Jake the Snake Roberts. Clunk him, clunk him. Wrestling like buddies want to be your buddy. Hey buddy, what's going on? Nothing, uh, officer. Body slam! <laughs> hey, who's the wise guy? Be ball man! Murphy. What's going uh, on? Nothing, Sarge. <laughs> Big Boss Man and Jake the Snake Roberts, the newest WWF wrestling buddies from Tonga. He sold separately. Man, I'll tell you something. That part with the dude with the kids, when he walks out, what's going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. a dark sense of humor. Go you know, I just remembered. We didn't watch our matches of the year. I know we didn't. I know we didn't watch our matches of the year. I think I've seen. I've seen it before anyway. I haven't yeah, seen the match of the year. So yeah. Um. So I was watching the basketball game. I realized shit. So I've watched the match of the year, but I think no, I've seen it. All right. So now the next one is most hated and is best heel for me. And you go with me first. Best heel. Is it Ric Flair? It oh. is The Undertaker. 
The Undertaker wins it. Number two is Ric Flair. Number three is Jake Roberts. Number four is Aja Kong. And number five is Cactus Jack. For you, most hated Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty obvious. Sergeant Slaughter was most hated Russell of the Year with 22,467 votes. First runner up is The Undertaker with 17,293 votes. Third runner up is Lex Luger with 11,249 votes. Third runner up is Jake Roberts with 7,976 votes. And honorable mentions totaling 12,623 include Cactus Jack, Typhoon, Ric Flair, Tony Atlas, Eric Embry, and Eddie Gilbert. Yeah, I go with gotta go with Taker on that one. Like Sarge was all fucked up. I mean, that was still just I mean, I can get the most hated part of it, but I, I still gotta go with Taker on that one. Yeah. You picking Taker also? I agree. Pull up here. It's gonna be rare that I choose Taker for anything, but yeah, Slaughter in ninety one, he was Oh, he was washed up. Yeah. All right. So there we go with that one. Okay. Let's do another commercial. Your weekly edition of Primetime Wrestling, Warriors of the Ring. And for your hero, the Hulkster, there's some garbage to clean up. And they don't come any dirtier than the Nasty Boys. Against them, it's pain, pain, pain. But down the road, romance is in the air. Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. Now that's love. And there's more military mayhem from the killer in khaki, Sergeant Slaughter. Put your order in with Sky Sports today. Satisfaction guaranteed. Primetime Wrestling, Saturday at 1.30. You're muted. Yeah, I was muted because I was on. Yeah. We're always muted when that's on. I'm not. Yeah, well, you just you are because I can hear you talk if you're talking. Anyway, um, that's a weird one. Is that like, are they giving prime time the sky in 91? They must be. I guess. Yeah, yeah it's very odd. Um, it's kind of strange. All right, match of the year. Uh, it's, it's your go first. I'm going to go with Savage and Warrior from Mania 7. It is the Steiners against Sting and Lex Luger. Oh, yeah. Makes from sense. From Super yeah. Brawl. Yeah. They win it with 23,919 votes. Uh, first runner up is Bret Hart versus Kurt Henning with 12,845. Second runner up is Lex Luger versus Ron Simmons with 11,992. Third runner up is Cactus Jack versus Eddie Gilbert with 6,124. Honorable mentions totaling 15,061 include Hulk Hogan beating Sergeant Slaughter on March 24, Steve Williams winning the first round of the UWF TV title tournament against Bam Bam Bigelow on June 9, Lex Luger beating Barry Windham for the vacant WCW World Championship on July 14, and the March 21st Royal Rumble. All right. My match of the year is... Is it... Steiners versus Kansuki Sasaki and Hiroshi Hase. Yeah, from start the Star K ninety one they had there, the um you know, super the, show. Here. Yeah, the super show. There you go. So I've seen that before. Oh, there's Taker again. Oops. Let's uh, go through the matches that runner up. Oh, where are you at? There you go. A uh, Bold Nakana and Akira Hato. Hakuto is second. Ric Flair, Larry Sabisco, Sid Vicious, and Barry Windham versus the Steiners Sting. And Brian Pillman in War Games, Cactus Jack and Eddie Gilbert, Steiners Sting against Sting and Luger, Sabisco and the Anderson against Ricky Sebo and Dustin Rhodes, Savage Warrior from Mania, Bret Hart and Kurt Henning from SummerSlam, Masahira Misawa, Kawada and Kabashi versus Jomo Suruda and Kira Tabu, and Masafuchi. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Masafuchi. Yeah. Fuchi, yeah. Juice Liger and Hirohase, Keijimoto against Chono from Tokyo, August 11th. Uh, just Liger and Benoit from October 10th, or October 18th, sorry. Thomas Ruda versus Kent Kabashi from May 24th. Hogan and Flair from October 23rd, Oakland, which is funny. I heard it might wasn't that good. Just Liger versus Owen Hart, April 27th. Thomas Ruda versus Kawada, October 24th. One more here. Ric Flair versus two, Fujinami, March 21st in Tokyo. So I'm going to go with Flair and, and oh, sorry, Sting and Luger. Against the Steiners, I really don't remember much about that other match. Yeah, I'm going Steiners against Tim Luger as well. So we're going to go PWI on that one. And then I'm here before I'm 90 to get to the line. PWI. All right. 
All right. So the next one's the Editor's Award. For me, it's best show of the year. The way I like to do with that, I got the whole card in front of me and I ran it down, but I want you to guess what it is. Is it Dream Slam? It is Russell Award 91. Yep. So let me jump into that card there. This damn fucking thing may move. God damn things popping up. Okay. So that one had opening match, dark match, Eddie Guerrero versus Ultraman. Alt- Eddie Guerrero and Ultraman defeated, oh Jesus Christ, Rudy Boy and her, I cannot pronounce the other person's name, a tag match, it was dark match. Opening match tonight, Ricky Morton, Tommy Rich, and Junkyard Dog defeated Big Cat and State the State Patrol, which is Earl Wright and Sergeant Bailey Parker for the WCW Six-Man Tag World Championship. Do you remember that match? Yeah. Sounds very yeah, I remember watching Russell War 91. I got it in a tape trade, and uh, quality wasn't the greatest, but it was watchable. And mm. I I loved watching uh, early 90s WCW pay-per-views that I had never seen and had completely forgotten the results. Like, there were some where I would not seen, but, you know, reading the magazines and Mm-hmm. Talk about it on TV, you you know what's going to happen, but something like that, it's like, oh, I don't. That match, not the best example because there's no way the State Patrol are winning on pay per view. But it's just nice to see matches that you you've forgotten about, or if you even knew about it in the first place. Bobby Eaton defeated Brad Armstrong in 12 minutes and 51 seconds. Uh, Yaga, Yaga, I cannot pronounce it, man. It's not going to waste. I'm just it's. All Japan women. Let's put it that way. Tag match. Dustin Rose versus Buddy Landell. Dustin beat uh, Dustin Rose beat Buddy Landell. The Young Pistols defeat the Royal Family. Jack Victor and Morgan. Terry Taylor defeated the Z Man. Your main man. And notice we'll have a case match in ten minutes and fifty nine seconds. Big Van Vader and Stan Hansen ended a double DQ. I remember that match and being very disappointed by that match compared to the one they had in Japan. Yeah, but I mean they can't bust each other's eyeballs out and stuff in that one. So I get that. Um. In the United States Heavyweight Championship match, Lex Luger defeated Dan Spivey by pinfall. The Freebirds with Big Daddy Dink and Diamond Dallas Page defeated Doom with Tay Long by pinfall to win the WWE World Tag Team Championship. And that was, uh, uh, that was actually a reign that was in negative time. Really? Yeah, because they they won it at Russell War, but they had already lost it on TV to the Steiners. So Jesus. They had a negative reign. It, it's really weird if you if you looked at the like the record books or Wikipedia, or whatever. It's like won it February twenty fifth, lost it February tenth, or something like that. <laughs> the main event: the four horsemen, Ric Flair, Barry Windham, Sid Vicious, and Larry Zbyszko, which not part of the horsemen but with Arn Anderson, defeated Sting, Brian Pillman, and the Steiner brothers. And that's when Sid Vicious almost fucking killed Pillman with that power bomb. Yeah. Like that was a that was a bad one at the top of the cage. And that is Russell War 91. So your editor award for you, I don't know, 91. Andre, maybe? It is our favorite. The fabulous Mula. She wins oh, the yeah. editor's award. What, how, many, how many girls she pimped out? Is that what she got the award for? <laughs> well, oh, maybe I have to do that. I have to a few uh, tricks I love the, the department wrestling girls, yeah. not for Mula. Oh, um, man. So she wins the editor's award. Okay. And last but not least, the wrestler of the year. For you, I'm going to go with Sting. It's the Hulkster, brother. Hulk Hogan wins wrestler of the year. And this was in the era when the WWF weren't working with non-WF magazine companies. Yeah, so yeah. they wouldn't have them holding the plaque. Hogan wins it with 18,238 votes. First runner-up is Lex Luger with 15,249 votes. Second runner-up is Bret Hart with 12,814 votes. Third runner-up is Sting with 12,248 votes. And honorable mentions totaling 12,925 include Ultimate Warrior, Ric Flair, Kurt Henning, The Patriot, Denishiro Tenru, and Jerry Lawler. All right. So am I Russell of the Year? I'm going to say Jumbo. It is Jumbo Saruta. Yes, that picture decided to come up. Is it come? Why the fuck is it not? <laughs> there it is. So where's the guy? What's that coming up? Yes, Jumbo wins it. Uh, let's see who the runner-ups are. 
The runner ups are Rick Flair, Justin Thunder Liger, Keijo Muda, and Bull Nakana. I'm going with uh, with Jumbo on that one because oh, Hogan, yeah. Hogan was fucking shit in 91. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know what they were thinking for him over at that point. And, and the thing is, Scott, there are all like there's a subsect in, in the internet wrestling community that are really high on the Hogan slaughter matches. Um, really? They got to stop smoking marijuana or crack, whatever the fuck they're smoking. Yeah. That's not good. Okay, so the total, Andrew, you have four for PWI, three for Wrestling Observer, and I have three for PWI, four for Wrestling Observer. Yeah, so I'm yeah. representing uh, the pro wrestling there industry. 91 is a weird year. I mean, I was pretty pumped to redo this because we've been doing the 2008s and 16s. I was like, holy fuck, man, let's do something funner. Um, but it's interesting. I got a couple more commercials I want to throw up too. And then we'll well, also, um, 1992 should be their year. You get, um, oh, you get some guesses. 92 should be their year. Problems. So you get six guesses. Give me a second. Lightning Kid. I'm going for my rookie of the year, guys. So I'm fucking doing Lightning Kid. Chaz Taylor. Cactus Jack. Oh, son of a bitch. PN News. Brian Christopher. Diamond Dallas Page. Those are all good guesses. You didn't get any, but those are good guesses. Uh, 1992 should be their year. Rick Rude, Rob Zakowski, also known as Rob Van Dam, mm -hmm. Beverly Brothers, Tony Anthony, and Jushin Thunder Liger. They already had their year. Fucking Liger was over like a motherfucker in Japan. What are they talking about? But anyway. But 92 yeah. should be their year. And yeah. Liger wins a WCW light heavyweight title. Oh, he has a good year in 92, but he had a good year in 91 also. So. Yeah. All right, what we're looking at here. I'm looking at we got the vitamin one done. I think I have like one more to go here. Oh, I'm not I'm not inviting anybody to the show here. Let's see what we got here. We have this one. To the size of the comic book. There it is. With Lex Luger, Sting, and many other great WCW wrestlers on the Blues Cruise, sail away on your passage to exotic beaches on luxurious MS New Amsterdam for a trip you'll never forget. Visit the exotic ports of Key West, Florida, Ocho Rios, Jamaica, Grand Cayman, and the beautiful beaches of Cozumel, Mexico. There will be special autograph sessions and beach parties with your favorite WCW wrestlers. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime dream vacation on the Bruise Cruise. I wonder about that stuff. Were they being paid as at that point, or was I just like, hey, you're just something extra? Because I'll tell you right now, bro, you can pay me enough money to go on a fucking cruise. Well, the I I, I've, watched, I've watched. Hey, I've watched Titanic. You ain't getting me on a boat in the middle of nowhere. I ain't happening. No, that's too fucked up for me. But I don't know what. The, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of things going on at that cruise that probably wasn't uh, talked about afterwards. Well, at least Mario Gennetti wasn't on it. Um, here's in memoriam. He would, have, he would have been fired four times before he got off. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, are, here are some wrestling personalities that we lost in 1991. Dick the Bruiser Athlas, Gene Anderson, Bialo the Giant, Chief Thunder Mountain, Ripper Collins, Ed the Bull Gantner, Nick Goulas, Duke Kiyomuko, Mr. Moto, Vivian Vachon, Chris Von Erich, Augie Well, and Frank Williams. I go Gene, probably the biggest one. Maybe Chris, because Chris was a pretty big deal when he died. Oh, Dick the Bruiser, man. Yeah. All right. I got one more clip to go, and then I'll jump into mine. There we go. Let's go share video file. I think I have one more clip to go. I might not. Wrestling buddies. Oh, this last one. Last one here. It's coming! And in a chamber of horrors. Yeah, coming! A blood-curdling, bone-chilling battle. Coming. A fright night with the monsters of World Championship Wrestling. It's coming. <laughs> Halloween Havoc 91, live, Sunday, October 27th, only on pay-per-view. Or as WWF likes to call now, premium live events. Yep.
PLEs. That's cool. Yeah, that's the one. So I'm gonna jump into my. You got anything else you want to do before I jump into my second areas? I have some predictions. Okay, let's go. Go ahead. Um, Rick and Scott Steiner will regain the WWE World Tag Team title early in the year. Check. Kurt Henning will become a fan favorite in the WWF and will win the newly created WWF TV title in a SummerSlam 92 tournament. So give him half points for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve Williams will pin Bret Hart to win the IC title. Nikita Koloff will feud with Sergeant Slaughter in the WWF. Rick and Vic Steamboat will form a successful tag team in global. Every year they say that. And every year that. <laughs> no, somebody's always done it for this yeah, is the year. It's, pro it's probably Vic Steamboat doing it. <laughs> uh, Chris Chavez and Chris Walker, known as a dynamic duo, will enter the WWF, and they both do, but not as a tag team. Yeah. Uh, Van Hammer will turn bad and down Sting to win the U.S. title. Thank oh. God that didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. A very muscular, well-tanned masked grappler will capture the WWF world title for Merc Flair at SummerSlam 92. After beating Flair, he will pull off the mask and reveal himself to be Playboy Buddy Rose, having lost 100 pounds on the blow-away diet. That was Sean Fluarty from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Another prediction, we've got Rick Rude will defeat Sting for the U.S. title at Russell War 91. Let me just say this. If you're going to do predictions, don't make it so specific. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just say he's going to win the U.S. title. Don't say at the, which event. Um, Minnesota Twins first baseman Kent Herbeck will do guest color commentary spot for a WCW event. What a weird prediction. Um, well, they were big back then. They won the World Series. Hulk Hogan will pin Ric Flair in a cage match at WrestleMania 8. The Undertaker will lock Vince McMahon in a casket. I will make it through a WCW pay-per-view event without falling asleep. That was Kevin Serio from Nutley, New Jersey. That's weird. I was waiting for Minnesota because he said the Twins thing. Yeah. No. But I guess not, yeah. Big baseball uh, guy. Keep going. Uh, one more here. Uh, Evander Holyfield will enter the WWF and claim to be the real world champion. The Ultimate Warrior will enter WCW and be known as Poindexter, the awesome accountant. <laughs> Johnny B. Bad will open a boutique in Los Angeles. Firebreaker Chip will become a rule breaker known as the Mad Arsonist. Ivan Koloff and Colonel Mustafa will open a chain of old age homes. The Patriot will be unmasked and will turn out to be Mr. Rogers. PN News will learn how to talk without rapping. Bret Hart will wash his hair. Hulk Hogan will grow hair, but only on the back. And that was Robert Berdowski from Queens, New York. I was ready to say New York. I'm not just saying that. I was ready to say New York for that one. And I have one other thing that before we uh, we do the other awards. Yeah. Um, these are wrestlers, wrestling personalities who were born in okay. 1991. Uh, we've got... Current AEW World Champion Adam Hangman Page, Alexa Bliss, Ooh, Alexander. Alexa. Too bad she got married. I know it's a simple. Yeah, you a chance. Yeah, and I saw. Yeah, you know, she was watching the podcast. Like, I might not marry that guy. I might get that guy there, the guy in the corner. But no, nah, it didn't happen. Also, uh, NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose was born in 1991, along with Britt Baker, DMD, uh, Mystico Two. Along with Chelsea Green, Cody Hall, Scott's son, yep. Colton Gunn, Billy's son, Quinn McKay, Raquel Gonzalez, Rich Swan, David Starr, Dewdrop, Drake Winter, Ruby Riot, Eddie Young, Sarah Bachman, Scarlett Bordeaux, or sorry, Bordeaux. El Hio Del Pantera, Shotzi Blackheart, Flip Gordon, and the Great Ocon. Those are some wrestling personalities that were born in 1991. All right. Let's jump into the second year awards. Most outstanding wrestler. Jushin Liger. Jushin Liger. Hirohase second, Kent Kabashi, Ric Flair, and Kei Jimudu. Most unimproved. 91. Was it Elegante? Davy Boy Smith, Hulk Hogan, Sid Vicious, T Fujinami, and Greg the Hammer Valentine. Most obnoxious. Is it Vincent Mann? Herb Abrams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy bastard. Jim Cornette, or Jim Hurd second, Vincent Mann's third, Hogan and Dusty. Round that off. Best on interviews. 
Is it Ric Flair? Ricky Flair. Arian is the second. Paulie Dangerously, Jake Roberts, and Jerry Lawler. Most charismatic. Hulk Hogan. Dogster brother. Number two, Anita. Sting, Flair, and Sid Justice. Best technical wrestler. Is it Bret Hart? Juice Liger. Hirohas is second. Flair, Kejimuto is fourth. Bruiser Brody Memorial Award. Best brawler. Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack, Anita second, Stan Hansen, Bull Nakana, Terry Gordy. Best flying wrestler. Jushin Thunder Liger. Yeah. Ultimate Dragon second, Brian Pillman, Bobby Eaton, Owen Hart. Most overrated wrestler. Is it Hogan? Sid Justice, Hogan, Van Hammer, Ultimate Warrior, LA Gante. Most underrated wrestler. It's Bobby Eaton. Terry Taylor. Brian Pillman, Brian Armstrong, Bobby Eaton. Best promotion. New Japan? You were incorrect. All Japan. Oh. New Japan second. All Japan women, WF, WCW. Best television show. <laughs> is it New Japan TV? All, all Japan. Oh, wow. New Japan World Pro is second. But you remember, Melcher went to Japan that year. So that's pretty much, he put that in everyone's head, how great they were. And they were great. But Superstars, Saturday Night, and Primetime Wrestling. Best television announcer. Is it Jim Ross? Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, this man. Worst television announcer. Is Roddy Piper? Gorilla Monsoon. Herb Abrams is second. Lord Alfred Hayes and Vincent Man Eric Bischoff. Gorilla Monsoon's better than all of those guys. I know, I know. Um, best wrestler move. Shooting Star Press. O'Hara, Moonsault on top rope to the outside. Justin Liger, top rope Frankensteiner. Ose, Ose Moonsaults. Scott Steiner, Frankensteiner. And Justin Liger's Ose Moonsault also. Worst wrestling card. Was it Great American Bash 91? It was, yeah. The We Won Flair match. Yeah. Great American Bash 91, Survivor Series, SummerSlam, WrestleMania 7, and Class of Champions 16. Best color announcer. Hmm. Bobby Heenan? Pauly Dangerously. Bobby Heenan second. Piper's third. That's they don't fucking talk about. Scott Anthony is fourth. Randy Savage is fifth. Which right there, that's three. Piper and Savage both brutal. Um, Reader's favorite wrestler. Jushin Liger. Rick Flair. Jushin Liger second. Cactus Jack. Here at Hase. Jumbo Saruta. Reader's least favorite wrestler. Ellie Dante. Hulk Hogan. Van Hammer. Jose Gonzalez. So I guess you, if you kill someone, you're not as bad as Hogan. <laughs> and Jim Duggan and Andre top that one out. Worst wrestler. I'm going to say Andre. Andre. L.A. Gante is second. Oz, Bill Kazmaier, and Sid Justice. Worst tag team. Andre and Baba. Andre and Baba. Bushwhackers, Patriots, Firebre Firebreaker Chip, and Todd Champion, Natural Disasters, Freebirds, and The Undertakers? I don't know who the fuck that is. The Undertakers... Uh, funny story about them. They used to wrestle for IWCCW. Okay. And they were the Undertakers before the Undertaker. So the WWF wanted to use the name the Undertaker, so they gave them a job doing jobs as Double Trouble. So if you've oh, ever man. seen the name Double Trouble in arena results, it's uh, these two fat guys that I think one of them went to ECW and was a big fat guy in ECW. I'm not 100% sure on that. They were really large and short round guys and they threw them a couple of bucks in order to take their name they probably didn't have to do that probably just give them a couple coupons to mcdonald's <laughs> um worst television show uwf yep worst manager mr fuji the mr fuji award yes <laughs> coach the second slick general agna and jimmy hart worst fuji match of the way better than coach Coach, oh, he drove me fucking crazy. That goddamn whistle. Like I killed him with it. Worst match of the year. Is it Ellie Dante and Sid? No, it is Bobby Eaton and PN News versus Steve Austin, Terry Taylor in a scaffold match. Yes. For American match. Yeah. It was just yeah, some tires, I believe. Like you have three good workers in that match, but that's not a good match because it's the oh, part of it. Yeah, because it's not even like the whole beauty of a scaffold beauty 
is you know it's a, it's the car crash element oh i'm gonna see somebody break their leg or something they yeah. didn't even have a bump it was to capture the flag yeah stupid useless match that whole fucking paper was all fucked up um sid vicious versus like gone to super brawl one bane hammer versus terry taylor oz versus bill kazmaier and halloween havoc and then also Halloween Havoc, Chamber of Horrors, Matt Sting, Steiners, and Gaunte versus Vader, Cactus, Diamond Stud, and Abdul the Butcher. Worst feud? Is it Slaughter and Hogan? Yes, it is. Number two is Gaunte and One Man Gang, Gaunte and Flair, Dave Boy Warlord. And we have a tie for fifth. Gaunte and Sid, Bossman and Mounty, PN News, and Johnny Bad. Worst on interviews? Hmm. Is it Warrior? Warrior. Van Hammer second. Carrie Von Eric. Hulk Hogan and Sting. And I think this is the last. No, we still got more. Okay. Worst promotion? UWF. You're correct. WCW, USWA, WF, IW, CCW. Best booker? Hmm. Is it Baba? Well, he went to Japan in 91, man. You're fucking right. It's Baba. Baba and Chosu, McMahon and Patterson, Eddie Gilbert, and Bill Eady. And Globe. I never knew Bill Eady booked in Global. Not interesting. Yeah. Best promoter. Baba. Baba. Visit Man, Joel Goodhart, Onita, and Noki. Best gimmick. Undertaker. Yes. Taker. And then we had Johnny Bad, Rick Flair's real, real world champion, Paul Bear, and the Mountie. Don't no, fuck them. It sucked. And the worst gimmick. Hmm. Hmm. 91. There's a, lot, there's a lot to pick from. There is. Um, I'm going to say Van Hammer. Oz. You were close. Van oh. Hammer was second. Uh, Rasta the Voodoo Man was third. PN News and the Patriots were last. And I think, yes, our last award, ladies and gentlemen. Most embarrassing wrestler. Andre. Van Hammer beats Andre. Oh. Yeah, it's Van Hammer. Andre's at two. PN News is three. Hulk Hogan's four. And tied for fifth is L.A. Gante and Oz, aka Kevin Nash. So that's 1991, man. That's it's a weird year because a lot of it really sucks, man. The early 91s. I know that was good, but WF is really bad. Early 91, man. It's really yeah. bad. Um, they pick it up right after SummerSlam. Well, that SummerSlam is good because they have like. Brett and Kurt, and then they pick it up in the fall. There's still some bad stuff, but I mean, they're getting to the point that the rock and wrestling fans, like myself, we're getting teenage years, dude. So wrestling's not our thing really anymore. We're still watching it, but we got other interests, like ladies, if you know what I'm talking about. Well, see, I was I was a couple years younger than you, so I was still like getting the magazines every every week or every day. You know, depending whenever I went to the store, there's yeah. always you know, if if not PWI, there'd be the wrestler or wrestling's main event. And you or... kids, let me just say something. Let's cut you off, Mr. Andrew. Big Andrew is that you kids don't even understand what it's like. You guys have the internet now. Back then, we had to get magazines to get our shit to get our yeah. Yeah, so that's going. how that's how we get our news. We'd find out of what's going on. Uh, that's how you'd find out who, which Von Eric killed themselves this month. <laughs> oh, come on, that's awful. You're gonna get flight flight, you know, because it's, you're talking about something. Oh right, uh, yeah. Which Von Eric off themselves this? Same thing. We're going to fly twice. That's great. <laughs> See, many times we get fly to this one. But like uh, 91s, yeah, it's just a fun little year. I was pumped to do it just because we originally did it and it was just dog shit quality. Dog shit quality. Yeah. So I thought let's mix it up a little bit. We've been doing the 2000s and nobody's watching. So let's pray we all watch here. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add to this? Um, no. I would just say if you made it this far, yeah, was, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet Jesus. If you have 1981, 1982, 1983, 2004, 2005, 2009, hop into our DMs. Either leave a comment on this video or message Newsstand versus Newsletter. We're on the Twitter. It's at um, PWI versus WN, I believe. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you can find us. Or just uh, search us. You'll find us. Type of news service news. You'll see us. So Yeah. Let us know what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right, like what, what you like, what you don't like. If you have any ideas of uh, how we can improve, we would appreciate it. If if you like what we're doing, let us know. Right now, we hardly get any comments. Leave us some comments. Subscribe. 
we are having that 100 subscriber contest. As yeah. soon as we make it to 100, you're getting three months, three months mm -hmm. YouTube premium. Oh, that's good great time. quality stuff. Talk about good quality. You get the music side. And by the way, can I jump in and say this? Yeah, go for it. Do you use YouTube music at all? No. Oh, dude. I'll tell you, you should. I'm on iTunes. Because I have, like tonight I was doing the cleaning in the house. They have, like, for, I'm a big Guns Roses fan. They have tons of bootleg concerts on there. I mean, I'm talking in full, dude. I listened to one from Tokyo from 1988, which I never heard before, man. They take all, it's not like Spotify where it's all, like, really monitored. They take, like, bootleg concerts and put them on there. So, so you can listen to Spaghetti Incident as often as you want. I don't hate it that much, but I'll tell you right now. Like I'm a big Chinese Guns Roses fan. You can listen to that as much as you want. Anyone that's still listening to Third Guns Roses fan hardcore like me, you know 88 is a good time because that's when they're at their best. And I'll tell you, man, you get some 88 con. They're rare to get. They're hard to get. So it's really cool. YouTube Music comes with YouTube Premium. It's awesome. It's the same as you. The only problem with it is you can't um, you can't uh, connect it with Alexa, which I don't like that. That kind of pisses me off. But anyway. All right, kids. Well, we thank you for watching if you're at this point. Um, and we will see you again in another episode of Newsstand versus Newsletter. Beautiful plaque. Okay, the first one is Billy Jack. Billy Jack was voted by all you fans all over the world as the most improved wrestler of the year. And I'd like to give him the plaque right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the man who received over 12,000 votes. 12,000 votes as the most popular wrestler of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the plaque, and now here's the man who won it. By your choice, the former World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion,